hey, he did the best Bond movie and the best Zorro movie. This director must be the best director of all time, right? Not really. Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of Martin Campbell's movies. Yes, Martin Campbell is a director, if you guys don't know, and yes, he's directed a lot of really big films, a lot of Bond films and Zorro films and other action espionage films, and I thought I'd do a ranking of all his films, because he directed The Foreigner that came out weeks ago, and I thought I'd celebrate The Foreigner and the director by giving a ranking of all his movies from my least favorite to my favorite, so yeah, let's get to it. He's got 11 films, so let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Martin Campbell's films from my least favorite to my favorite. Alright, coming at number 11 is one of the worst superhero films of all time. Not the worst, but one of the worst, and that is Green Lantern. Yes, believe it or not, Martin Campbell directed Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds, the ugly, disgusting CGI mess of a film. This was supposed to begin the DCEU. Thank God it did not. And thank God this movie tanked horribly, because this was a god-awful piece of garbage film. Ryan Reynolds was awful. Uh, he might have been a decent choice to play Hal Jordan, but we'll never know. He will always be Deadpool to us, because that's the role he was born to play, not Hal Jordan. This movie is freaking awful. So bad. Ryan Reynolds is terrible. Peter Skarsgård is in the movie. He's an awful villain. Blake Lively's awful. You got Parallax as a fart cloud. And the CGI is some of the most ugliest CGI I've ever seen in all of cinema in the past decade. It is atrocious and ugly. It looks like a big cartoon. And it's just awful. The story's awful. It's beyond cliche. It's beyond predictable. The characters are stock characters. And it's just a complete waste of time, and it's hands down the worst Martin Campbell film I've ever seen. Coming number 10 is Beyond Borders. Beyond Borders is a film that no one has probably seen, which is, it's good. Uh, this is a terrible film. This uh, has no comedy, no drama, no thrills, bad acting, bad writing, sloppy execution, bad structure. This is just a Beyond... This is just an atrocious film. It's forgettable, it's generic, there's nothing much else to say about it, but skip it. You've probably already skipped it already because no one's ever heard of this film, so keep on skipping it. Coming number 9 is The Legend of Zorro. Yes, the sequel to The Mask of Zorro, which I'll be getting into soon because that movie's amazing. But The Legend of Zorro, I was so pumped for this movie. I remember when this movie came to theaters, I saw it in theaters because The Mask of Zorro I did not see in theaters, but when that came on VHS, I watched the shit out of that film because that movie's freaking awesome. The Legend of Zorro is such a disappointing, such a crap-ass sequel, and my god, everything about this movie, I just, I just hate. I hate everything about this movie. This ruins almost everything from the first one. Like, Zorro's an unlikable person. Uh, um, uh, what's her name? Elena? Is it Elena? Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm blanking on the name. I think it's Elena, but yeah, Kevin, Kevin Zeta Jones in this movie, she's so pointless. The, the child, their kid, is so annoying. The villain is such a terrible and useless villain. The action is not exciting. It's not adventurous. It's not enjoyable. It's not romantic. There's nothing about nothing great about this movie. All the awesome things, the great things about the original Mask of Zorro that came out in the '90s, but is nothing in it. it. It's not existent in this film, and just nothing about this movie is good. It's not adventurous or fun or entertaining. I was excited to see another Zorro film, and. They should have just left well enough alone. This is just an awful sequel, an awful film with bad direction, and I absolutely hate it. Coming number eight is Criminal Law. Criminal Law, yes, another film that no one's ever heard of. Good reason. This is a terrible, horribly structured film with bad performances, sloppy writing, a predictable and cliched ending, and yeah, all these films, I feel like I'm bashing Martin Campbell too much, but trust me, he does have good films. Just these ones aren't his good films, and yeah, there's nothing else I gotta say about this one. It's just a, another, just another bad Martin Campbell film. Coming number seven is No Escape. Yes, no, not the Owen Wilson, Pierce Brosnan one that came out a couple years ago. Another bad film, but yeah. Yes, I know what you Is this finally a good Martin Campbell film I'm going to talk about? Uh, of course not. This is another bad film with bad performances, bad writing, a cliched ending. It just It's such a forgettable and generic film. That's the thing about Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell makes a lot of, well, not a lot, of, quite a few great films, and they leave an impact on cinema and stuff, but then he just makes these very by-the-numbers, very generic, very predictable, very stale films, and they're just, they lack in thrills, good acting, and good writing and stuff, and they're just lackluster films, and I just can't stand them. He's not like a middle ground kind of guy. Either his films are really good, or they're just really awful, and this is just another awful film. 
Coming number six is Vertical Limit. Vertical Limit is not is not a good movie either, but this is a definitely a more watchable one out of his bad films. This has Chris O'Donnell, Bill Paxton, Robin Tooney. This is basically about ma mountain climbing. And it's basically about these explorers and the mountains and stuff. They get trapped and stuff. And main character Chris O'Donnell, his sister is one of the people that's trapped. So basically he's got to go up the mountain with a team of mountain climbers and stuff and basically has to go and rescue her. It's basically just your typical rescue adventure story, thriller story. It's got a lot of avalanches and lots of climbing and people falling off cliffs and stuff. It's not very exciting. It's not very thrilling. It's not very edgy. The acting's nothing that great. It's nothing that bad, but it's nothing that great. The characters are very, you know, not that interesting. Kind of one note and stuff. The brother daughter, the brother sister relationship is very predictable and stuff. You know, they there was an incident in the beginning. They don't like each other, but then he saves her. They're close again. Stuff very predictable shit. It's nothing that great. I've seen better movies about mountain climbing and stuff. A lot more cheesier films like Cliffhanger, but. It's not that exciting. It's definitely the more watchable of the bad films, but it's still not a good film. Coming number five is Edge of Darkness. Edge of Darkness is actually a pretty underrated film. I actually don't mind this movie. This is Asmel Gibson and stuff, and this is another kind of movie about a man losing his daughter. Yes, he just made a movie like that uh, just this year. I'll be talking about it in my next in the next movie I'll be talking about. Uh, this is a good movie though. This is not a it's not a great film, and it's definitely not a, like, very, not really a very original and fresh take on this sort of story, but Mel Gibson's in this movie, and he does give a good performance, and there is some pretty good action scenes, and there is some literally intense moments with some real genuine tension, and there is some very emotionally handled scenes, and again, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson really makes the movie for me. The supporting cast is fine. There is some very cliched moments, and again, this is not a fresh plot, this is not a fresh story. Mel Gibson really makes the movie good and stuff, and yeah, Mark Hamill's direction is fine, but Mel Gibson is the show stealer in this film, and he's the one that makes it a more entertaining film. And yeah, it's not a great film, but it is definitely a pretty good movie, and it's a movie I watch every couple of years and stuff, and get some enjoyment out of it, and yeah, it's at least it's better than Vertical Limit and all those other bad films, like I said. He doesn't really have an okay movie. It's either a great, it's either a good film or a bad film. And Edge of uh, Edge of Darkness goes into the good film category. So yeah, good job. Cover number four is The Foreigner. Yes, The Foreigner. I just did a review of uh, I think a couple weeks ago, a week and a half ago. I'll leave a link down below to my review. I really enjoyed the shit out of this film. I thought this was a really good film. I thought Jackie Chan was awesome. Pierce Brosnan was awesome. I like the story about this guy who loses his daughter, and it's all because of this government, and he basically, it's like a one-man show, one-man show of him taking down all these government agents and stuff, and it's mostly about Pierce Brosnan. I thought the whole movie would be about Jackie Chan. It's, it's called The Foreigner, so I thought it would be about Jackie Chan losing his daughter and stuff. The movie, the only flaw I have with this movie, well, the biggest flaw is there is not enough Jackie Chan. The whole movie is... Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan, but mostly Pierce Brosnan, but at least Pierce Brosnan does give a good performance, and he is very enjoyable to watch. Jackie Chan is really friggin' solid, has a really cool backstory, but I wanted more Jackie Chan. And any scene that isn't ha doesn't have Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan, it's not that great, but the film still does work because the movie is still mostly Pierce Brosnan and Jackie Chan, and they are both really solid. There's some genuinely good action, good tension. The scene where Jackie Chan loses his daughter is really emotional, and... I really enjoyed this film. I thought this was a really good film and a kind of underrated film, and yeah, I really liked it. Come number three is GoldenEye. GoldenEye is one of my favorite Bond films. It's not the best, it's one of them though. This is when Pierce Brosnan first came in in the James Bond role just after Timothy Dalton. I was a little upset because I loved Timothy Dalton. I love Living Daylights and License to Kill. So when I heard Pierce Brosnan came in, I'm like, ugh, can he do it? And it turns out he could. And then he did the sequels, and it turns out he couldn't. But still, uh, GoldenEye is a great film with a great villain, Double Six, played by Sean Bean, who of course dies in the film because it's Sean Bean, it's in his contract. <laughs> it's got a good Bond girl, there's some really cool side characters, I am invincible, yes, Alan Cumming. There's some really good action, Fakie Jensen's in this film, who crushes guys with her legs, it's a little weird, but it's really good. There's a good romance to it, great action, a great villain, a great story, it's very intense. It started Pierce Brosnan's uh, James Bond career really well, but then he did three sequels that sucked the big ass, but still, GoldenEye is fantastic, and Martin Campbell's direction is really great, and it's one of my favorite Bond films, and it's my third favorite Martin Campbell film. 
Come number two is The Mask of Zorro. Yes, Zorro is a film that I've watched all through my childhood. I've watched it so many times when I had the VHS tape. I absolutely adore this film. Antonio Banderas, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Anthony Hopkins, they're all fantastic in this film. All of the film begins with Anthony Hopkins as Zorro, then it's about Don Alejandro becoming the new Zorro and stuff, and Anthony Hopkins training him so they both can get the can get on their so they both can get the revenge on two different guys. One guy, uh, Raphael, uh, Anthony Hopkins wants revenge because he took his daughter, played by Captain Zeta Jones, and Antonio Banderas wants to get revenge on Captain Love, who killed his brother. There is some great squash-buckling action in this film. These characters are such enjoyable, likable characters. The performances are just so good. It's also got a good romantic story between Captain Zed Jones and Tony Banderas. I absolutely adore this film. I think this is so freaking good. I've seen this movie over 50 times because I watched this so many times. I loved this movie as a kid. And I still, I still love it now. I think it's such a great film. I think it's a very timeless film. And I absolutely adore it. I think they almost damn near ruined it with the sequel. But Mask of Zero, amazing. And my number one favorite Martin Campbell film is, of course, Casino Royale. It's Casino Royale. This is the best Bond film, and it's the best movie Martin Campbell's ever directed. This movie is so good. Also, it's a romantic story. It's about James Bond, how he actually legit falls in love with a Bond girl, and he gives up everything for this Bond girl. Spoilers, he shouldn't have done it. Yes, uh, Daniel Craig, this is the very, very first movie Daniel Craig became James Bond, and I absolutely loved it. I loved him as Bond. I still love him as Bond, even in the bad ones like Spectre and Quantum of Solace. He's still very good in those films, and yeah, Casino Royale is fantastic. I love how each act is its different genre. Like, the first act is a straight spy film, and then the second act is a straight, like, gambling film of him, you know, playing in this poker tournament and stuff. And then the third act is a straight romantic story between him and Eva Green. I love it. I love this film. I think it's a two and a half hour grand ma amazing masterpiece James Bond film. It's so freaking good. Again, it's two and a half hours and it flies by because you're just having such a blast with this film. The action is amazing. The beginning chase scene is one of my favorite chase scenes in action films. Again, Daniel Craig's performance is so good. Judi Dench is back. It's M. She's fantastic. Uh, Eva Green's amazing. Mads Mikkelsen is so freaking good. Oh, what's his name? Lachif? Le Chief? Is it Le Chief? Yeah, he is a great Bond villain, my favorite Bond film, favorite Bond villains I am trying to talk, but I love this movie. I thought Martin's Cam Martin Campbell's direction was so freaking good. The ending action scene was really good, very intense, very sad. How this movie ends with the um, Bond, James Bond. It's so freaking badass. A great soundtrack, great visuals, great cinematography, a fantastic score, and all around just an amazing, great James Bond feel, and a great James Bond vibe. It's not campy like, you know, the Roger Moore ones, and it's not too dark like the Timothy Dalton ones. It's a perfect balance, and that's why it's a perfect Bond film. It's not a perfect film, but a perfect James Bond film, and of course, the best movie Martin Campbell's ever directed. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Martin Campbell's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, what is your ranking of all of Martin Campbell's films, in your opinion, from your least favorite to your favorite? Comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like this video, please like subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.